Cardano, Absolutely. ADA, the third largest cryptocurrency by market cap, skyrocketing over 1,000% year to date. Behind that surge is the completion of Cardano's Alonzo hard fork, which introduces smart contracts onto the Cardano blockchain. And joining us now to discuss is Frederick Grigard, CEO of the Cardano Foundation. Hey there, Frederick, great to have you on. So perhaps you can give us an update on smart contracts capability on Cardano. This is a huge upgrade. What does it mean? for development on the Cardano blockchain? Well, it means a lot, really. So for five years, we've been on a journey to really change the world and take a couple of steps backwards and really do things, you know, very fireable, correct. So not just launching things and do trial and error, but really launching things at scale, which can bring 2 billion users to a blockchain. So the launch of the Alonso hard fork basically means that the close to 4,000 developers who's been in our uh, private testnet and been coding away on smart contracts, that they now also can go out there and actually launch that. But even more importantly, it also means that we now have a bridge between different technologies on the Cardano blockchain, which is the native assets, the combination of metadata and smart contracts. And that's really unparalleled in the blockchain space. Uh, welcome. So Cardano is obviously doing really well. One of the criticisms of Cardano has always been um, kind of a lack of use cases or a lack of usability. Can you tell us a little bit about what is currently the leading DAP on Cardano? Oh, yeah, that's probably pretty easy because we don't really have a leading DAP at the moment. You've only been able to do what you call a DAP or what the Ethereum community call a DAP for, for, yeah, for, for 17 days or something like that. Um, so, so we don't really have like that. And if you go into uh, to the DAP overuse, you won't find us there either. And that's really because um, a lot of things which is happening on blockchain has been around, you know, what is a DAP, what is a native assets, what controls transactions and how do you capture metadata and what does adoption really look like? So what we did is that, for instance, we merged identity into the blockchain very heavily. So we're onboarding 5 million users in Ethiopia to give them a digital identity in the education space. And you can ask yourself, you know, why is that important? Well, it's important both out of a macroeconomic perspective because it allows students in Ethiopia to jump over the border and verify and authenticate that they actually done all of the work uh, when they went to university. And it allows also the uh, Ministry of, of Education to verify certain things and, and to learn from certain things. On the flip side of that, what we see is that it also allows us to, to do things which has been very hard on blockchain before. And that is really to merge metadata at scale and identity into the blockchain. So what we just announced here over the uh, over the weekend is that we're doing a cooperation with Veritree uh, to plant one million trees. So a lot of these tree forestation um, companies and regeneration companies had a big issue in terms of proving you know, that a tree was planted. It's always been, you know, you send some money and then you get a picture of a child or of a tree and then you're, you're feeling really good about yourself. But how far can you actually go in that, let's say, supply chain to ensure that not only do we become, you know, the greenest blockchain due to proof of stake, but also due to carbon offsetting, but also how really can we change the way we bring trust into different business models? And I think what's really truly unique here is that this is actually a utility token and not an NFT. And secondly, is that we are putting all the information about the token into the token itself. And that changes the trust equation compared to that you have to go on a website or a centralized database and you're thinking, oh, this might be a security or is this, you know, what kind of, what is, what am I actually trading here? So for those of you who mm -hmm. are into capital markets, you know that we put probably around 100 to 120 metadata points into a normal security. So we feel that this is the absolute minimum we can do on blockchain as well. And um, Frederick, so, are, so are these projects, are they operational right now? Yeah, they are. Oh, okay. That's really interesting. The uh, partnership with Ethiopia as well as the Veritree. Um, nevertheless, yeah, there so are... everything has to, yeah. So, I mean, everything takes time. And some of these deals has been, you know, years in the making and a lot of uh, negotiations. So there's not 5 million people in Ethiopia live today, but the system is being rolled out. And as you can imagine, bringing local schools and stuff like that on board, it takes a bit of time, but the deal is for 5 million. And over the weekend, we, we closed, I think, 25% or 23% of the trees uh, for 1 million trees. So those would mainly be mangrove trees, right? So we got a, we did a little impact challenge. So we actually raised, uh, yeah, well, 250,000 trees, right? And one tree is, is equal one ADA uh, over the weekend alone. Um, and we just see that mounting up again, uh, you know, it's Tuesday now, right? So, so it's just moving forward. Um, and... 
Cardano has its fair share of detractors as well. Uh, for instance, Galaxy Digital's CEO Mike Novogratz has tweeted, I've learned one thing in the past 24 hours, Cardano has a passionate group of followers. I have no position and still think there are better level one alternative bets like Luna and Solana. Plus, I spoke to 20 of the smartest people I know in the space, and zero of them ha saw Cardano having traction with devs. And so, Frederick, in there, I see two criticisms. One, there are better alternatives out there to Cardano, and I, I'd love to hear you address that. And number two, um, and, and Novograd specifically mentions Solana, Luna. Number two, there's no traction with devs, so not a very thriving developer community in Cardano. Would love to hear you address those criticisms. Yeah. Um, so I guess the question is always, with what lens are we looking at? So let's have a look at uh, the Solanas and, and, and the Algorands and so on. Um, I think it's not going to be one blockchain who takes over the world and becomes like, you know, the, the, the only, you know, big brother where we can lock data and, and, and do certain things. There will be a multiple blockchains and they all have their own purpose. And we are definitely late to the market. I mean, we spent five years going back to academic research to do things right. And that's because we believe that if you really put 2 billion users on a blockchain and you merge that with identity and regulation, so you really have real FI and not just DeFi, which is needed to ensure that the regulators accept uh, the adoption on the chain, well, then things cannot break. And, you know, I always when I say that I'm holding the desk and I'm like, oh, my God, I hope we also don't break. But, you know, <laughs> I'm just so, you know, it's incredible proud of the time we've been live. We never had any downtime. And, and, you know, I get really worried when I see blockchains, uh, which is supposed to be decentralized and, and, you know, ready for government, that they go down or they are not, you know, that systems around them go down. This is, uh, blockchain is supposed to be a, a place where you get more trust and not less trust. So I think uh, that's the first thing I would say. It's really about, you know, getting the architecture right. And I hope that for us being slow means that we can hold the direction and be very strong. But we are maybe one or two years late in the market and according to smart contracts and other things which is out there. The other lens of looking at this is potentially thinking about the developer community and what is the developer community. So according to different data sets we have, there's around 26 million developers worldwide right now. It's really hard to figure out, you know, if you can just write two lines of code, are you a developer or do you need to be a software engineer? So this is the EDC numbers, which seems to be the most accurate. And out of those, only 0.03% of those has any interaction with blockchain and crypto. So that leads me to believe that, you know, when we're talking about the level of attraction, all of us are like behind. Because if you look at the potential of blockchain, we should have had a lot more enterprise developers to come on our platforms and really start changing the world and building decentralized apps. And the fact that Frederick, we don't have that... Say Yep. Oh, sorry, go ahead. I just want to ask you we don't have that is an incentive problem. So, mm -hmm. I mean, if you look at it today, what incentivizes an enterprise developer to come to a decentralized platform? I mean, there is uh, really sorry, no, no incentive. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt you. Just, I wanted to make sure we could follow quickly on Ethiopia before we wrap. Um, you know, it's a really ambitious project. You know, you're aiming for 5 million. It obviously takes time. I'm just curious, do you have numbers on like how many people are actually using it now? And just, you know, what is the timeline to reach that, that 5 million projection? Actually, I don't have numbers on that uh, right now. Um, but uh, I think the timeline will be years um, to get to the full adoption because things don't move over time. So the first P, the first schools and so on, they are you know they are chalking away on it, and the first uh, dates has been issued, um, but I don't have a dashboard where we're tracking that. Um, Frederick, one thing that I think Cardano has been really, really good at is building community, right? I mean, it's I, I've always been so impressed with like how active uh, the Cardano community is just on social media and just kind of all over the world. I'm curious, like, how, how were you able to do that, just build such like an active and involved community? And do you have a sense of geography, like where the majority of your users are based? We do have some numbers on that. And over the weekend, we had uh, what we call the Cardano Summit, which was a celebration of the Alon to Hard Fork. And we had over 80,000 registered attendants in over 40 countries who came live together and also virtually together to, to celebrate that. Um, we see that, unfortunately, mainly in the English-speaking countries or countries who has, uh, you know, some kind of, you know, 
they can speak English in either first, second or third language, that this is the strongest following. And this is something we work for the foundation also to spread. The other thing which we see is that a lot of the people who are following the Cardano for, for years, um, they're really in it to change the world and create a better place where a lot of other blockchain projects are very isolated into changing one problem or maybe even you know profit optimization. And I think therefore a lot of the let's say the Cardano community is very loyal to us uh, because you know we just stayed on the course uh, for such a long time and the, the community just keeps growing. It's really amazing and it's been amazing to meet so many people um, in Wyoming where I was over the weekend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I get that sense from you for sure, Frederick, that it's very, it's peer reviewed, academic, and you're taking the slow and steady route rather than the break things, move quick and break things approach. Um, another question I wanted to ask you in terms of regulation was, uh, you know, the SEC uh, chair, Gary Gensler, is especially looking to crack down on crypto or maybe not crack down, but regulate the space in a more thorough manner. Is there ever any concern that Cardano could retrospectively be considered a security. Is it safe from the long arm of the SEC? So we truly believe in, in, in regulation enables innovation. And I think also what we saw with the infrastructure bill, uh, there is definitely some work to be done uh, across different geographies to ensure that we get this innovation. Um, I cannot you know, look into the crystal ball and 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 kind of say what a uh, you know what a regulator will say you know years to come. But when we look at the how it says specifically uh, in the U.S., we have a lot of utility on chain. We have you know information asymmetry is not present. Um, you know, mm -hmm. it, it's very decentralized. It's the most decentralized blockchain out there today, uh, which also is a is a drawback, right? So if we speak about other blockchains, they might have a you know a faster transactions per second or other things because they're very centralized. But um, but uh, we believe in regulation, and I think the fact that we have you know an architecture who's built in for uh, economic identity and identity it really is going to help us uh, through the regulatory landscape compared to against it. 